This is the regular board meeting of August 17, 2023. It is now nine minutes past four. We will begin roll call. President Chavez. Present. Vice President Cortese. Here. Clerk Doe. Here. Member Herrera. Here. Member Lee. Here. Welcome to the regular board meeting of August 17, 2023. Are there any members of the public who would like to provide public comment to the board on a closed session agenda item at this time? We have no online public comment, nor do we have in-person public comment. Okay. The board will now recess to closed session. Um, welcome back. Uh, let's get started with the Pledge of Allegiance. So we could all stand, please. Thank you. <clears throat> Welcome to the regular board meeting of August 17, 2023. Members of the public, please submit your public comment as follows. Public comment may be made in person in the boardroom by filling out a speaker request form located at the entrance of the room. It looks like this. <clears throat> you may also raise your hand in Zoom to request to speak and offer comment in real time. You may also submit your public comment online by accessing the link to agenda located at the district's homepage at www.esuhsd.org. Please reference the agenda item number in your written comment and limit your written comments to no more than 1,000 characters in length. Public comment submitted online will be read into the record. Please note, all meetings are recorded all regular and special meetings of the Board of Trustees and Board Study Sessions are streamlined, streamed live on meeting nights and are also available for viewing the day after the meeting by accessing the district's YouTube channel listed on the district's webpage at www.esuhsd.org under the quick link section. The board is not able to respond to items that are not on the agenda or any personnel issues. Your comment will be read into the record and will be directed to the superintendent and or the appropriate staff member for response. Interpretation of this meeting in Spanish and Vietnamese can be heard by accessing the link and following the instructions shown on the agenda or on the district website. Okay, so now we are on item five, 5.01. This is adoption of the agenda. So are there any requests that items be removed from the agenda for consideration and are carried to future board meetings? No? Okay, but for now we're good. Are we okay, Glenn? Oh, okay, great. <clears throat> So item 1501, bond oversight presentation will be moved to next meeting. Correct. Anything else? No other requests from staff. Okay, great. That's 5.01. Um, section six, there's no items under the section. Uh, section seven, exciting news. So we have our um, new student governing board representative, Emily Sue. Welcome, Emily. Um, would you like to say a few words to introduce yourself? 
Um, hello, my name is Emily Su, and I'll be representing the Student Governing Board this year. Um, our Student Governing Board had our first meeting of the year on Monday, and we officially transitioned back to in-person meetings, which was definitely a refreshing start to the year and something that I'm really looking forward to as the energy was definitely lacking um, online. We re-elected our um, executive board members and are now looking to recruit new freshman representatives um, within the individual Eastside Union High Schools. And our student governing board is just having a great start so far, and I'm look really looking forward to the year we have ahead with this amazing group. Thank you. You're welcome. We're excited to have you. I'm sorry, I didn't get what school that you're at. Um, I go to P. Oh, I go to Piedmont Hills High School. Piedmont. Piedmont Hill. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You're, you're going to need to speak closely to the <laughs> to the microphone so that we hear you well, Emily. You'll get used to it before you know it. And Emily, Emily was our was the vice chair last year, so she we have a very seasoned leader here with us. So I'm very excited to see what you create this year, Emily. Yeah, congratulations! Also, welcome, Emily. Looking forward to working with you, and also Patty and uh, Superintendent. Uh, for the new board, a student governing board uh, this year. Um, I appreciate all the support. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. All right. So now um, we are on a section eight special order of business. This is where superintendent or board members may request items to be um, discussed or acted out of order. Is there anything that we would like to move um, on the agenda? Much to move. So much Listen, to move. want to make sure. All right. So it sounds like there's nothing there. Um, there's nothing under section nine, public hearing. All right. So we are now on section 10. Um, yes. Public section, um, public uh, comments. Uh, are we okay to uh, move on to that section? Or should we just pause for a second? Yeah. Online public comment. Oh, hold on. I, I still haven't read the thing, but I, I just wanted to make sure. All right, all right. Should I, should we go here? Are we good to go here? We can begin um, agenda item 10, yes. Okay, great. All right, <clears throat> section 10, public members who wish to address the board. Members of the public may address the board on any subject not on tonight's agenda. However, provisions of the Brown Act, Government Code Section 54954.2a and 54954.3 preclude any action. As an unagendized item, no response is required from the board or district staff and no action can be taken. However, the board may instruct the superintendent to agendize the item for a future meeting. Any person may address the board on any item on the meeting agenda. Persons wishing to address the board may participate and comment as follows. In-person public comment may be made in person in the meeting room by filling out a public speaker request form at the room's entrance. I mentioned it looks like this and they're right, at the, um, right outside the door. When your name is called, please come to the podium and state your name for the record. You may also raise your virtual hand in Zoom to request to speak and offer comment in real time. You will have two minutes to speak. Persons may also fill out a speaker request form via online submission. Comments should be limited to no more than 1,000 characters in length. Please reference your submission, the agenda item under your comment. Your comment will be read out loud as part of the public meeting. All right, so now with that, um, do we have any, I don't see any um, request here. There's no public comment nor written comment. Okay. Great, so nothing on section 10. <laughs> All right, we can go on to section 11. So this is discussion and or action regarding CSBA call for nominations for directors at large, uh, African-American and American Indian. So we, I guess this is where we make any, any... We don't have any name that we want to 
suggest. So I think we can. I, you don't have any um, suggestions for name. Do, does anybody else on this board have any suggestions for any nominations for the <laughs> African American or uh, American Indian directors at large? Mr. Joe? No. Okay, thank you. Okay, so there's nothing there. Um, if given that there's nothing there, there isn't a motion required, right? No, no motion required. Okay, great. So that's section 11. Uh, or section 12. It's nothing under section 12. Um, section 13, presentation and or discussion regarding child nutrition services programs. So Ms. Huntoon. Well, yes, Julie. good evening. Uh, Miss Julie Casperger will be uh, presenting something to you this evening. Good evening, board, uh, Superintendent Vanderzee and Eastside community. My name is Julie Casperger. I'm the director of general services. And tonight I'm going to be presenting some information on the child nutrition program. And y'all didn't give me any time to get nervous. So that's great. <laughs> So we'll be going over some information on demographics and um, who's participating, funding sources, staffing. We did a student survey, so we're going to give you some feedback on that, things that we're going to be watching for, some opportunities that have come up that are amazing, and then questions. You can ask questions whenever you want. I'm open anytime. So next, next. Sorry, Glenn, I'm going really, really fast. So the next, there we go. So um, we provide meals for 29 different schools, programs, and charter schools. And so our high schools, uh, some SBN, small but necessary high schools, two adult transition programs. We have four county programs and seven charter schools. So next, whenever it, that Is, all, yes. We provide, we provide food to charter schools? Yes, we do. So uh, KIPP and ACE and DCP and LVLA and CCA. Wow, okay. I can't do the others though, <laughs> off the top of my head. But yeah, we do in the in the schools. So um, those programs make up just less than twenty three thousand students. Um, our uh, socioeconomic breakdown: um, it's thirty seven point one percent free and reduced, and that's not to be confused with our unduplicated count. Our unduplicated count for the district is fifty point six percent. That number is made up with up of not only our free and reduced, but also migrant, homeless, runaway foster, um, CalFresh, and CalWORKs. And so this number is actually lower than like the pre pandemic period. But the reason for that is we no longer require a meal application for kiddos to get free breakfast and free lunch. And so when those families don't have a need to fill the application out for meals, they don't fill the application out. And so um, the reason they should be filling the application out is, of course, for LCFF, or LCFF funding, but also for the family, it's SAT, PSAT, and ACT testing waivers, um, college application waivers, um, AP testing discounts, and we have the new pandemic EBT benefits, um, the application helps with that, as well as internet discounts. And so we really are strongly encouraging all households to fill out applications this year. So we have a big push that we're working right now with kids and families with that. So the programs that we offer are the breakfast program through the school breakfast program, lunch through the National School Lunch Program. We do supper through the Child and Adult Care Feeding Program, as well as summer meals through the um, Summer Seamless Waiver. And mind you, every one of these meals are free to our kids. And so it doesn't matter who they are, where they come from, what school they're at, every single student receives the meal for free. And it's similar to like these recent years where the kids could just walk up and get their meal. They don't need to show ID or put in a pin or- We are there this year. And so, yes, I'm gonna talk about that oh. on the next slide. <laughs> So, okay. yes. So uh, when you look at pre-pandemic, post-pandemic um, meal participation, you can see that our meals have gone up significantly, a 42% increase overall. And so that's what happens when you provide free food to kids and they don't have to put that ID into the system. They're going to walk up and they're going to grab their meal and they're going to eat it. And so, yes, that's exactly what happened. And so the next slide talks about reasons for incre the increase in participation is exactly that. So the top three, the state meal mandate, community eligibility, and provision um, two, those are the funding sources and the ability for us to do the free meals to every single student, breakfast and lunch. 
The other one is, is I believe that we have a more diverse menu now. The supply chain has loosened up, especially in the past probably four months. We finally are at a point where when we order a weekly order of something, we get the full order because there was a period of time, even up through the first three months of school last year, where we were being denied or you know, canceled out on full orders from Tyson and full orders from many of our commodity processors just because they didn't have the wraps to be able to wrap the burrito in or they didn't have the labor force to be able to run the machines. And so um, within the past four months, that's really loosened up. So we've been able to get a more diverse from scratch um, meal, as well as, um, okay, I'm going to toot this though. I've been here for 18 years and last year for a 12 hour period, but I'll take the 12 hours, we were fully staffed. And so staffing has been something that all of my peers in the area, they, they are struggling with. We were fully staffed for the majority of the year last year. I don't think we went one day with more than three to four um, folks that were or positions that were open. And so we've been very lucky from a staffing standpoint, as well as I think um, the COVID notoriety. I think the National School Lunch Program, Breakfast Program, and um, just our folks with the, the food service program, they were the folks that were out on the line every single day. And that was a very positive thing in the community. And I think that's carried forward. So our funding sources are coming from federal, state, and local reimbursements. <laughs> Those darn phones. <laughs> anyway, um, we have, oh, I see it's B. I'm echoing. We're working on it. Anyway, so we are funded basically on reimbursements. So it's going to be the breakfast and the lunch reimbursements are the big ones. We were very concerned up till about Monday of this week. Sweet, I prefer to walk out. <laughs> I need those ear things like singers have. <laughs> so I don't get the anyway. So we were um we were being told that we were going to lose 15 cents per meal, federal reimbursement, 15 for breakfast and 40 cents per meal at lunch, uh, just because of funding. And we were lucky enough, we received all of the information on Monday. And the reality is we actually got an additional 13 cents for breakfast, a teeny decrease in lunch of 0 0.006 cents. And then supper, we got an increase of 21 cents. And so we're okay. That the What we were anticipating was a, a hit of about a half million dollars had we not gotten this money. And so um, we're very excited about that. From a staffing standpoint, we have a little over 200 folks that help us in the program, of which 86 of them are the folks that are frontline. They are the ones making the food, putting it in the ovens, and the managers. And then we also have anywhere from 125 to 150 students that help us on any given day uh, to help serve the food. And so those are our student workers. Student workers, are, are they compensated in any way? Or yes, they are. We oh. pay them and it's a, it's an excellent resume booster. And um, I, my department secretary worked for us when she was in high school and she has worked her way up. She became a CNS one and then she became a manager and she's now our department secretary. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Okay. I love that story. Yeah. <laughs> and she's amazing. <laughs> um, anyway, so we did a student survey at the, uh, toward the end of this school year last year. And what was amazing was the amount of information that came from the survey. And the more amazing thing was because of some uh, funding grants that we're receiving two slides from now, I'll tell you about them two slides from now, almost every one of these we can address because we have the money to be able to address 90% of what these concerns of the students were. And so what we did is we put them into buckets. And so um, kiddos that were interested in specialty diets, vegetarian, vegan, halal, uh, kosher, uh, gluten-free. And so it's like, you know, those are things that because of the cost of it, we in the past have not been able to offer those uh, types of items to the kids where we now have specific grants to address that. And so we're going to be able to pay for those sorts of, we've got it, we're going to be able to do it. Uh, faster lines. This concern came predominantly from the provision two schools. And so I'm going to go back to what Lorena said earlier, when you had to put your ID in there, it slows the line down rather than just walking up, grabbing your meal and going. And so those lines are gone. Those ID requirements are gone now because we had last year was a base year for provision two funding, which meant we had to establish percentages. Well, on July one, we now start with the percentages. And so we just have to do a tally sheet and then we claim based off the tally sheet. And so the line speed is going to, and has, has, um, sped up. And we see that with the number of meals being served at those five sites. And so, for example, um, 
Silver Creek last year, we'd serve about 450 lunches a day. She's breaking 600 every day now. And this is the beginning of the school year. And so normally they're a little lower, but anyway, so that's what those silly lines did to us. And so now we're able to get them going. Um, more variety, and in particular, more variety in fresh fruits and vegetables. And we have several grants we'll talk about that are going to help us with that. Um, we want nutrient information. <laughs> Not a problem. We already have the nutrient information. It's available online. It's just the kids didn't know where to go get it. So what we've done now is we've put QR codes on the in the serving area so they can just go to that area and they're able to get not only the menus, but they can get the nutrient information, total full nutrient information as well as carb counts. And so if we have someone who has dietary needs, we've got um, specific carb counts. Um, get rid of the pizza and plastic. Amen. <laughs> and so we, I, okay, I can't guarantee it always. At the supper program, we still have it, but we are now doing all fresh pizza. And so we have four sites that have pizza ovens. And so they're going through the pizza oven, but all the rest of them are actually doing fresh, fresh pizza. And it's a much better product. Uh, requesting ethnic foods. And so I, it, it was an interesting meeting I had just last week. And what DIN uh, has an opportunity for us to um, work with uh, uh, some folks uh, as far as uh, developing recipe and cooking techniques from an Asian standpoint, which is an area in our program. We don't have a lot of Asians that are managers. And so we're going to bring uh, somebody in that can help us with that. And the food's bland. And I have to agree at a point, you know, I'm a salt girl, um, but our requirement for sodium, it was at 14, 20 milligrams per average per week. It has now this year gone down to 1280. And so not, it was bland. It's, but again, we have a grant that we're now going to be able to bring in fresh basil, fresh jalapenos, uh, lemons and limes. And we've already brought staff in to work with recipes. And so um, for the, um, Arroz con leche, we are doing lemon zest in there to give it that popped flavor. And so we've already put the recipes together and and I'm going to wait until I get down there. I you know, don't want to supersede myself. Anyway, so some of the things that we're going to be watching out for as we move forward uh, have to do with, just with the ongoing federal and state um, funding. That is what has made a lot of what I'm talking about right now available to us is the funding is there. So we're no longer hurting the district you know, having to be subsidized. Um, and so the state and federal funding is there for us to do the program that we want to do. And so as long as that's there, we're totally excited about that. You know, the economy, you just never know what's going to happen with the economy and how it'll affect budgets, state budgets, federal budgets, um, work, work course and staffing. And again, I'm going to go back to, I have the most amazing staff in the world and we're in a great shape right now, but you just never know. And so we just have to keep an eye out with that. And then just, you know, this is a problem I like, and that is we have such increase in participation, you know, are the kids going to have enough time to eat? And so just things that we have to keep an eye out for. Um, as far as opportunities within the program, I have the best, best group of people in the entire world that I work with. They are the best. And so they're the reasons we're so successful. They're the reasons that you're going to see pictures of food at the end of the presentation. They're amazing. So this, uh, California was the first state in the nation to approve universal meals, which means free breakfast, free lunch to every single student, every single school day, um, <clears throat> which means it's an equitable, you aren't identified. If you're hungry, you eat, you get in line, you go. There's no embarrassment if I don't have money. Anyway, and so that has been really amazing. But I think the one, the, the one that is totally unprecedented, I've been doing child nutrition services for 38 years and never seen grant funding that we are seeing in the past three years. And so this year alone, we have applied for and so far received over $3.2 million in grant funding. Wow. <laughs> and so, um, so more specifically, when you the kitchen infrastructure and training grant, that one is specifically for from scratch cooking, and it's to get equipment, food, and trained staff to be able to do from scratch cooking. Uh, the next one, which is the Equipment Assistance Grant, we were able to receive $84,000 for Piedmont Hills High School equipment. And so that's going to be new refrigerators, new freezers, heat and holds, sanitary set, 
Evergreen and Piedmont do not qualify for any grants because they're not high free and reduced. And so they have never, ever, especially Piedmont Hills has never, we can't even apply for it because they have caps on it. And so um, they opened up this grant and I was, I was like, what the heck, we might as well try. There's all this other money out there. Maybe people aren't applying and sure as anything, we, we got it. And I think it's because everybody, it was just another grant they didn't want to fall. I don't know. We got it. We're excited. The equipment has now been ordered and it'll be coming in very soon. <laughs> So excited about that one. Then there's the supply chain um, assistance grant. This was to help us. This is the, we've had, so far we've had three rounds of supply chain assistance grant funding. This is predominantly for um, our milk and our produce. And so the funding available for this, this year is just less than $750,000. And I found out on Monday, there is a fourth round that we're going to be receiving. It's a 50, I'm sorry, $5,000 base. And then it'll be uh, enrollment on top of that. So it will be another five hundred seven hundred thousand dollars on top that will go toward next year's uh, milk and vegetables. And so that's where we almost hit that four million dollar mark. <laughs> so the last two on here, which are the school food best practices and the local food for schools, they're on the next slide. And I wanted to break those out because these are very unique grants where the first one, which is the school food best practices, it is um, where they're focusing on California grown foods. And so this is the one, this is funding that's going to be available for the um, religious specialty diets, preferences. And so that's the halal, um, kosher, vegan, vegetarian, gluten. And so it's going to be $400,000 that we can use this year and next year toward those types of items. And so the requests that came in on, the, on our survey, we're now going to be able to address those with this money. Uh, the second one is the local food for schools, and this is one where it's for local small businesses that have been socially disadvantaged. And so we are partnering with a company called CalPerf. It's a local um, meat company, and we are purchasing fresh tri-tip, and we're doing fresh tri-tip sandwiches. And so we did them today, and they went beyond great. <laughs> And yes, it was, you're going to see a picture. It was amazing, amazing. The other company that we're partnering with on this particular grant is um, uh, South Bay Produce. And they're um, helping us with fresh, we're calling them deluxe cups. And so it's fresh sliced tomatoes, shredded lettuce and pickle cups for all of our cheeseburgers and spicy chicken sandwiches. Um, it's, it's, we're doing avocados on all of our wraps. We're doing fresh fruits with our yogurt and oatmeal. We're able to do um, the spices we talked about earlier. So it's the fresh basil, the fresh oregano, the lemons and the limes and the jalapenos. They're all coming from South Bay Produce, as well as all the different seasonal fresh fruits and vegetables that we typically can't and I hate to say it this way, we but it's a it's a 60 cent fruit as compared to a 20 cent fruit. <laughs> Anyway, and so this this week we had um, plums and nectarines and peaches, and we're going to be getting plumots and anyway grapes and so it just is opening up a lot of stuff for us. Sweets, uh, the snap peas. We're going to be doing fresh snap peas as well as cauliflower florets to be able to have with our broccoli florets. Um, anyway, and so we're really really excited about these grants. And so here is the results of our grants. And so, and I want you to know that I did not take these pictures. I did not call and say, hey, can you send me some pictures so I can put it on a board agenda? These are pictures that the CNS ones, the cooks and the managers just are sending. Today, I think I got 12 because they were so proud of their tri-tip sandwich. And so they want us to see what they're serving out there. So the, it's a yogurt with fresh blueberries is the one up here. This is a um, beef taco salad with fresh, fresh lettuce and fresh tomato. The one down in the corner over here is one that I grew up on. It's not going over well here in this area, but it's cottage cheese with fresh strawberries. The tri-tip sandwich is the middle one, the lower middle one. And then here are the deluxe cups that we're so excited about. And I just have to tell you on the first day of school, I spent the entire day moving pickles around the district because we only had two schools that got their pickle order. <laughs> so I was moving them so everybody had pickle cups on Thursday. It's, let, it's shredded, let, fresh shredded lettuce, uh, tomato slices and pickles for the burgers. Yeah, we were doing just a burger with cheese and it was a jam sandwich. 
<laughs> now we're doing I'm realizing I haven't been to the food services yeah. <laughs> at the school site for a long time. Yeah. Well, <laughs> they have they have really worked hard this past two weeks. But what's amazing is when I get pictures like this, it tells me that they're proud. And so, yes, it's a lot of work. We're going to meet on Monday and we're going to talk about, okay, what can we do to help? No, we're not going to have pasole and arroz con leche on the same day because it's a total to stovetop and it would kill everybody. Anyway, so we, we're going to work with managers. And as, as well, we're going to start working with folks to get the different palettes and the, anyway, and so... Anyway, I got to say, I'm just, I'm tickled pink to be part of this department right now. It's amazing. And like I said, a lot of it is the funding is there to do what we know we can do. That's amazing. Yes. Round of applause. <laughs> yes. Love the. If you can convince Manuel to, uh, to give up his dinner and go for this, then, it, then we know it's fantastic. Yeah. Well, I think that the other piece is, is we really do want to have a student uh, voice in our, uh, in our recipes and such. And so I think that'll be one of our next steps. Yes. It'll be one of our next steps that we're, um, because I know, I know what I like, but I, I know what I like is a different palette than potentially. Yeah. You know, who we're serving and, and get the diversity of who we're serving. Yeah. I mean, you can't, I can't tell you how many conversations I've had with students about, you know, just their experience in the district. And food always comes up in different ways. So this is really exciting to see. I love the freshness. I'm like, do we have access to the menus? Oh, yeah. They're on www.esuhsd.org under students and parents. Go to uh, Child Nutrition Serves. serves. <laughs> and the men serves. And then go just go to menu. And so all of our menus are on there as well as the nutrient information. Or just go to one of the serving lines and do the QR code. Okay. <laughs> All right, I might be visiting that soon. All right, colleagues, <laughs> any comments or questions? I, um, oh, go. Ahead. go. Okay. <laughs> well, first, I just want to acknowledge you, Julie. You have always been so enthusiastic, and the passion you have for this, you know, service to our students. It, in my eight years, it's thank you. It, it's never waned ever, even among the, you know, among the, the challenges and the COVID and all that stuff. I mean, and of course your team were just absolutely literally heroes throughout all that. Um, and, you know, now to see all this possibility when the funding is there, um, I hate to be a wet blanket, but how long do we, I mean, do we think the funding is what, you know, how long do these grants go? You know, what's that? The... That's what I'm talking about on the presentation at this point, because of the amount of money, we'll never spend. All, we won't spend 4 million this year. We have two of the grants we have to use this year. And so the one that's the local food for schools, which is the tri-tip is the one where we've par partnered with the two or, um, companies that one has to be expended totally by uh, March. And so what we're doing is we're developing a menu so we can use that money by March. But you see, we then have the other three grants that will cover us through June. And so I believe based on, we have three of the grants that kick out all the way to 2025. And so we've got at least this year and next year that we'll be able to do some very cool things. Um, like I said, though, the feds came up with the money they said they were going to take away from us. And so I believe what's going to happen is, um, what I hope <laughs> is folks are going to see what this money is doing for the lunch program and the breakfast program and the quality that we're going to be able to serve. And we can now compete with the Europeans. And, you know, when you go on Facebook and you see the pictures of what their meals are, and then you look at our meals, we'll, we'll compete now because, you know, if we're able to do, you know, we can do a try we're today, we talked about it. It's like, you know, let's not do just tri-tip sandwiches. Let's do a tri-tip dinner. So we're already ready to do a tri-tip with mashed potatoes and corn on the cob. And so we can do that. And so I'm hoping that it becomes something that's expected. I'm comfortable for the mo most part with California with the universal meals, but from the grant standpoint, we've got at least two years, but you know, that's something we all need to be talking about <laughs> to get, keep that funding coming. And what I'm just wondering what, you know, how can we close that feedback loop so that the funding does continue? Like how, you know, our, I hope that the, the um, feds are tracking the success and they're, you know, getting both the qualitative and the quantitative data and all that. So are you, you're feeling that's happening? Oh yeah. Because part, many of, okay. So all the grants have uh, response um, requirements. And so um, the one that's the, 
$135,000 one. I have to do a quarterly report on that, on exactly what invoices <laughs> we spent. And I had to send in POs and show them what the POs looked like and what we were going to be purchasing. And so I believe that there are going to be measures in place, yes. My professional organization, which is the School Food Service um, Association, uh, we're advocating every day for this kind of stuff. And so anything that I can see that y'all can help with, you better believe it will come to you because um, this is something that is very important for kids. I believe is very important. We believe is very important for kids. I'm really appreciating this update and I had no idea of these fundamental changes that had occurred over the last two or three years. And it's like, I'm amazed. And did I understand correctly, you're currently not encroaching on the general fund? That's correct. That's correct. Whoa, since when? Two years ago. Yeah, I last believe year. it was last year and this year. Last we're year we're budgeted year. not to be encroaching. On. I expected to hear that we were encroaching less but not at all. No, 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 none. <laughs> <laughs> and Manuel, I'm going to be, I'm going to have to be very honest with you. I was supposed to do this presentation in June of last year. All of that grant information, that was all tentative, pending, 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 pending. I didn't learn about many of these. We didn't learn about until early July. I found out about one of them on Monday. And so this is stuff that, this is all just stuff. And, and I think the key is apply for everything you can because man, you might get it. <laughs> Wow, I'm so impressed. Mm -hmm. I have to say thank you. I did request this presentation from last <laughs> June of fiscal year and appreciate uh, you and your staff have been working very hard for this program. Um, my question for you is, uh, you, <clears throat> you mentioned about the ethnic choice. Can you elaborate a little bit on ethnic choice that you have, that you have in Vietnamese mind working that Vietnamese food. Vaughn, <laughs> <laughs> right. well, you and I know about, you know, I, we ate a Vietnamese sandwich one time and you taste tested it and you said, that's not a Vietnamese sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's getting, it's getting the right palate in with the recipes and the techniques. And, and really this was an aha I've just had in the past month where it's been like, okay, I've got kitchen managers and cooks that are of a diverse group <laughs> that we don't we are missing a very key one. And so when what said, Hey, can I help you with that? It was like, Oh, I've got the funding. So yeah, I'll awesome. bring in a consultant to help us with that. And then come in and teach the cooks then how to do, how to cook tofu and how to oh. cook, you know, wow. you know, things. And so that I was trying to be soft, but that, that's yeah, what it please is. Please let me know the first one so I can go and, and test. <laughs> I have to tell you, I'll let you go on the second time because <laughs> um, Sergio and I were going to go out today and do the the, the tri-tip sandwich and the kitchen manager that we had chosen, she said, I'd really appreciate, let me have one time of doing it before you bring somebody in to take pictures. <laughs> and and we were lucky because it was at James Lick. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. You know, it's really amazing <clears throat> to see all of those hard work and transfer to all of this uh, food that we serve uh, for our students. And I was wondering that now you open more for breakfast with bagels and all of this fresh fruit and vegetable. And some of the school did not have cafeteria. So you pack them in the container and they just pick up and go. But the one that has cafeteria, then you let them pick and choose their fresh fruit or vegetable? We don't, I'm not doing salad bars right now. Okay. Okay. And so they do have the offerings. Um, I prefer not to have to have the prepackaged because it doesn't look nice. In the student unions, we're working toward, and mind you, this time of year is very difficult because, you know, the 150 students we normally have, we normally start school with about 20 district wide. And so this time of year, we're working our way into getting the, the serving folks. Really what I want to be able to do is all of the hot meals, I'd like to be able to put them onto a black plate and not have it be in the pack. Well, actually salads would be okay, but you know, the center, like the spaghettis and such, it would be nice to have on the nice black plates so that right. it looks like home. Yeah, that's, that's the marketing piece. You know. Yeah, that's awesome. Awesome. Um, <clears throat> and I was wondering that... Uh, what we provided for our student, 
uh, we already met all of this regulation from state and federal, right? That's, that's something that's really amazing because I know that I sat down with you a long, long time ago. You <laughs> have to calculate how many calories, how many protein that we have to do in order to meet, you know, the requirement from state and federal. So kudos for you and your staff. Thank you. As a matter of fact, most of these grants are we can't supplant. So we can't we can't pay for something that we're already doing. And so that's why all the new fruits and vegetables, because they have to be new. We can't pay for our bananas, apples, and oranges that we've always always paid for. Mm -hmm. And so that's the, the the desire is to get that. And I'll tell you, the the first two days of school, the kids recognized it. And we lucked out this week. We had our commodities come in and it, they came in with fresh fruits and vegetables with, you know, cantaloupe. And so again, the staff had to cut, <laughs> but it was amazing. It was, it was beautiful. Thank you. That's all I have. <clears throat> I just want to express my uh, appreciation for your enthusiasm and your positive attitude. Even when there was a lot of challenges. I remember two years ago, there was enormous amount of challenges. And, and at that time, um, uh, even though it's the, the district subsidized, we still have a lot of challenges because of supply chain. Uh, so, so I want to express my gratitude to you and to your team. Uh, please convey to the team how much uh, we, we are grateful for the work they have done. Definitely. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other comments? Well, thank you, Julie. Appreciate all your work and okay, your thank team's you. work as well. Okay, thank you. All right, so now we are moving on to um, item 13.02, Ms. Huntu. I think this is a, a regular item, but if you can just give like a quick one-liner headline of what this is. Oh, right. Yeah. 13.02, back in January, there was a resolution that came before you uh, for a funding application for this funding, um, which um, is the, uh, this is the child development, there's two of them on here this evening. This one is the child care and development program, and also um, in that res resolution was the renewal. So this now is the contract that follows up, so this is the next step for that funding. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, do we have any comments or questions, colleagues? To approve. Um, any in-person public speaker request? No, public comment? Okay, um, move to approve by Cortezi, seconded by Herrera. You're so fast, you're gonna get the next one. <laughs> uh, Emily, how do you vote? So I or nay or, or how, how, you, you get to actually vote. This is your first vote, Emily. I'm just realizing. Either yes I approve or, no. or yes, or I. Oh. You can say I. You can say nay. I. <laughs> there you go. Your first I. Uh, board, all those in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? The vote passes unanimously. Okay. Okay. So that's 13.02, 13.03. Ms. Hentoon, similarly. Yes, this is exactly the same. It's just that the program is different. This program is for the state preschool program. Great. No mm -hmm. comments? No. Okay. Um, any comments? On the move no. Approval. Okay. Move for approval? Yes. Second? Second. Second. Oh, Moved so, by Lay, move seconded by Doe. Emily, how do you vote? Aye. There you go. That was a lot quicker. <laughs> um, board, all those in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Vote passes unanimously. Okay, now we are on to 13.04. This is approval of contracts, business services for over 25,000. Ms. Hentoon? Move for this approval. Standard. standard, yeah. It is. I was just going to mention, we, we changed the format just a little bit um, for ease of reading. So it has broken it down by revenues and expenditures for those contracts that are below that uh, 25,000, or I'm sorry, over the 25,000. Awesome. Thank you for that. And I believe, uh, Herrera, did you move for approval? Who? I did not hear the second. Doe? Doe seconded? Okay. Um, <clears throat> Emily, how do you vote? Okay, on board, all those in favor of the motion? Aye. 
Opposed? Abstentions? Uh, motion passes unanimously. Okay, so we are now in 13.05. This is adoption of the resolution 2324-01 designates, designating committed fund balance, Ms. Huntu. Yeah, so 13.05, this is for, uh, this really is fulfilling a statutory um, requirement. Um, and so this is for the commitment of funds. So back in June, there was a resolution that the board approved related to um, a fiscal solvency. And so this is committing those funds. There are no changes to the dollar amounts. It's a, it's a requirement to commit the funds under that fiscal solvency. Great. I'll move to approve. Second. Moved by Cortezi, seconded by Doe. Emily, how do you vote? Aye. Board, all those in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Vote passes unanimously. Okay, so now we're moving on to section 14, 14.01, uh, action to approve provisional permit request for certified employees. Um, do I have a motion on the floor? Move for approval. Second. So moved by Trustee Lay, seconded by Cortezi. Emily, how do you vote? Aye. Um, board, all those in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention? Vote passes unanimously. Pretty standard too, and I believe 1402 is also pretty standard. Approved variable term permit waiver request. Do I have a motion on the floor? Um, second. Moved by Doe, seconded by Cortezi. Emily, how do you vote? Board, all those in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion passes unanimously. All right, so we're now in section 15. 1501, we're moving to the next meeting. 1502, this is action to approve the bond capital pro project contracts over 50,000. So Ms. Huntoon, same thing, standard, similar to? One. Yeah, same. Move, move, move. Okay, so move by um, yep. Trustee Doe. So second. I have a second, second by uh, Trustee Cortezzi. Uh, Emily, how do you vote? Aye. Board, all those in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Vote passes unanimously. Okay, we are now in consent calendar. Move of the second. consent calendar. Huh. Moved by um, Trustee Herrera, seconded by Trustee Doe. Um, so calling the vote on consent calendar so item 16 to 20. Um, Emily, how do you vote? Aye. Board, all those in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Vote passes unanimously. All right, we are now in section number 21. All right, this is written reports. We have one item under written reports. No action is required. The item is received into the public record. So we are receiving this item. This is from Ms. Huntoon. Um, so thank you for that. Um, that's number 21. Uh, section number 22, future board um, agenda items. So board, this is the opportunity for y'all to make any request for future um, board agenda items. On the wall, you will see the uh, items that have already been asked for, and we will be coordinating with that to, to bring them forward as well. Yeah, I appreciate that. I see that where we see the dates here. And I'm so looking forward to hearing from our equity councils this year, just saying. Yes. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Okay. All right. We are moving quickly. Um, section number. All right. So we are now number. 23. So um, this is comments at the or end of the board meeting. And so we're going to mix it up a little bit where I usually start on my left. Let's start on my right. Oh, my God. So, Mr. Herrera. Uh, so glad to be back on this new school year, 2023 to 2024. And uh, looking forward to what we can accomplish together. Thank you. Thank you. Um, as the associate liaison to the student governing board. I was so excited to be able to um, swear in our new uh, board members and um, was uh, equally excited that the the board voted to do, I don't want to steal any of Emily Sunder, but well, you already said it, that we're meeting in in-person. So um, 
it is so nice um, meeting these students in person because I realized I've known many of them for years and ne just never knew what they looked like because they had just had a little, a little box on Zoom with their camera off. So um, I'm really looking forward to getting to know them this year. Uh, Trustee Lee. Well, I just want to say welcome back. Uh, looking forward for another year, um, a successful year. I think and I believe that uh, last month I had the opportunity to visit <clears throat> the construction of a student union at Independence. It's really amazing. Um, I can wait to see the um, project will be completed. And I'm looking forward for other uh, project and for the bond construction project presentation, you know, in the next couple of months. So thank you and welcome, Emily. And I'm also glad that uh, Patty Cotizzi also be a partner and uh, help out, you know, the student governing board. And I'm glad to be there in the next uh, student governing board meeting. Thank you, Trustee Lay. Trustee Doe. It's the new year. I'd like to take the opportunity to welcome our students and our staff back to the district. We're looking forward to um, a, a great new year uh, as we um, look to make improvements from the past. And I also want to welcome Emily. And I also want to take a quick moment on a personal note to welcome the birth of my, uh, my nephew, Naveen. Uh, congratulations to the parents. And uh, to the grandparents, you, uh, the grandparents, you now have um, enough to two football teams, two soccer teams, excuse me. Uh, uh, so congratulations and uh, much good luck, uh, luck to you. Wow, two soccer teams, huh? Uh, well, similar to my colleagues, I'd like to welcome everybody back to the school year, um, but it's been a little bit over a week. Um, yeah, so that's been great to have everybody. So welcome back students and staff and community. Um, welcome, Emily. We're excited to have you here and to hear your contributions or your continued contributions because you are not new to these spaces. So um, we're excited for that. Um, also, um, I would be remiss if I did not acknowledge two of my colleagues for their birthdays. Um, Trustee Doe, happy birthday today. Um, so, yay. Um, and Trustee Lay, your birthday is next Friday. We will not be here, but want to recognize you as well. Happy birthday. Okay. Um, and uh, I uh, would be remiss, uh, we would be remiss uh, to not acknowledge a situation um, that happened uh, earlier today in one of our school communities um, involving uh, two of our students, um, James Lake High School specifically. Um, I want to reiterate that uh, school safety, student, uh, school safety, students and staff and community is our number one priority. Um, we are still waiting to get all the facts and learn exactly what happened. As a district, we're continuing to monitor the situation. Um, what we do know um, is that the well-being of the students is not life-threatening. Uh, so that's one positive thing. Um, and we are working with law enforcement and looking into what can be done in preventing um, situations like this in um, the future. So we will be assessing our safety needs. Um, thoughts are with the students and their families and our school communities. We wish them a speedy recovery. Um, and with that, um, Mr. Vanderzee. Oh, actually, yes, actually, yes. Sorry, apologies for that. Emily, you are next. Um, I kind of already iterated what I wanted to say in the very beginning, but um, I'm very appreciative for the supportive team and I'm very excited to hopefully successfully lead the student governing board and learn and grow with this um, amazing board. Thank you so much for welcoming me. Thank you, Emily. Now, Mr. Vanders. Yeah, I just want to say we've been in school. Well, well we'll be finishing our second complete week um, tomorrow. And the energy and the, the level of engagement at our school sites has been tremendous this year. Um, and I want to thank all of our staff and our students and our community for uh, how we re-engage this year and focused on student success. And again, um, never going to hear me talk without mentioning that we have the wonderful opportunity to make sure that all of our students qualify for that Spartan Eastside promise, where if our students get a 2.5 GPA, 
meet their A3G requirements. They can they are guaranteed admission if they as seniors apply before November 30th. So that that is an, a, a promise that we want to make an opportunity and a reality for our students. But the events of today also definitely cast um, a, a pall on on some of that. It doesn't def defeat what's happening at other sites. Uh, the events of today do not speak represent what James Lake High School is nor what East Side is. It was a senseless act. Um, we are continue to. Uh, collaborate with San Jose Police. I want to thank them for that collaboration. I want to thank the staff and the students of James Lick High School and as well as support staff around that site that are helping uh, helping each other process what happened. And as you mentioned before, we'll be uh, assessing and looking at our safety needs to make, an, make sure incidents like that do not happen again. Our hearts are with the family and our hearts are with the James Lick community. And we um, as members of Eastside know who we are and what we will do and what we will be about. And an incident like today is not us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Vanderzee. Okay. Um, <clears throat> section uh, 24, uh, legal counsel. Is there anything to report out? There are no reportable actions. Okay. Um, and with that, we are on section 25. It is 659. This meeting is adjourned.